Like most programming languages, the LC3 will execute in the order from the first instruction to the last instruction in the order that it's provided in the, the source code. There are times when you would want to change that, such as in the case of, say, an if or an if else, if you want to execute one block of code and skip another or vice versa, or if you want to loop back up and run a block of code more than one time, such as in a while or a do while loop. So we don't have those instructions in LC3, but we do have the capability using the branch instruction to create those um, constructs here in LC3. The instruction is branch, which is br, and then the next part of the instruction is which of the three condition code register settings that you want to key off of. And uh, you recall the options are n for negative, z for zero, and p for positive. So in the case of the instruction I have here, this branch is going to happen if the current condo condition code register is negative or zero or positive. So in fact, this would branch always to someplace else. If I only wanted to branch if the value were negative, then I would just uh, make the instruction branch in for negative. And in this case, the branch will only happen if the condition code register was set by a previous instruction to negative and then the branch would, would occur. If not, it would just continue executing normally. Now, the second part of the instruction here is where to branch to. So we've defined that we want to branch if the condition code register is currently negative, and now we have to tell it where to branch if that's the case. So in this case, um, let's say I want to be done with the program, so I would jump to a label. Now, the assembly tiplet has one label built in here, and that's done. Done is not a keyword in LC3. It's just something I included in the assembly template so that you can always branch and jump around code to end your program. I can just type the name of the label I want to jump to, and in executing my program, assuming that there's some code up above here that is setting the condition code register. If it were to result in the condition code register being set to in, then my code would skip any other lines, jump here to done, and in this case, jumping here means it would call halt and terminate the program. So let's build out this example a little bit so that we can actually see this in, in action. Okay, so let me do something before the branch instruction that um, will set the condition code register. So I will just um, add into uh, one of the registers. We'll use R4. Um, we will add the current value in R4. And then I will add a hard-coded value, which makes it a little bit easier for me to know what the condition code register is going to be set. And I will set it to a negative 2. That line of code will execute. Negative 2 will be placed in R4, assuming R4 was 0 to start with. And then um, the condition code register would be set to a negative uh, value, or a, a negative. And then the next line of code would, would essentially say branch if the condition code register is in or negative to done and would jump here. So let's put one more line of code in that may or may not execute depending on if that branch is taken. And then we'll just do another add. And we know it's in R4, so we'll say R, um, R4. R And we will add uh, what's already in R4 with uh, five. Okay, so this line may or may not execute given that this branch may be taken depending on the condition code register. Now we can see here probably what's going to happen because this is a very short program. Let's go ahead and assemble that and let's walk through it here in the uh, simulate environment. So we're going to start by stepping over that line of code. We have a negative 2 as expected. C 
condition code register is negative. So here we're going to branch if negative to done, which would skip this line and jump here. So when we step over, we can see that we skipped this line. R4 was not changed. And now we're here to done. If I go back and cause this to be a positive value, let's see, I just put a 2 in and this reassemble, of course and then execute this, then we'll see that um, a two was not put into the register because I, besides assembling, I also needed to reinitialize the machine. There was a negative two in here and when we added a positive two, it became zero. Um, we'll go ahead and see what's gonna happen here. Condition code register is zero. The test for the branch here is if it's negative to jump around to done. Well, it's not negative, it's zero. So if we step over here, we're going to stop it and execute this line of code. So we're going to add five to what is zero. When I step over that, we get five. And then we just naturally fell through to the done. Just for completeness, let me run this the way I'd, I'd originally in, in intended to. And I'm going to reinitialize the machine. I'm going to go back over here and reassemble so it loads. Okay, And now I'm back to all the registers initialized, the step that I forgot last time. So when I step over this line, we have a 2 here like I'd planned. Condition code register is positive. And we'll have the same, same situation here. Step over. Uh, because this was positive, we did not take the branch. We just continued dropping through the code normally. Added a 5, there's our 7, and now we're, we're here at the halt command. So the, the last thing I want to show you here is a modification of this code to make it function like an if-else. So currently we have what is effectively an if after something is done here we make it make a decision to execute code or skip code like an if but if i were to um, rewrite this i can make it into an if else so that we're guaranteed to execute either one set of instructions or another uh, but not both and not neither one of those here is a example of an if else and let's walk through the code here I've got a memory location that contains a negative value, a negative 4. And the first instruction is to load that into R1. This is going to set the condition code register based on, in this case, a negative value. So it will be set to in. And then there are two tests in a row. And recall that the um, whatever the last instruction is that sets a condition code is the one the condition code that that will persist so by taking a branch the condition code doesn't get cleared out it stays the same so whatever the condition code register gets set by this instruction it'll be the same if when we go through this branch and if we don't take the branch we're just going to fall through to the next line and i'm going to if or else effectively I've provided some label names to branch to in the case of negative or positive or zero. And then down below, I have created uh, that label and then instructions to execute if that branch is taken. And we end up either here or here. There's a couple of fundamental problems with this that we'll see as we run it. So what's going to happen when we encounter a negative number is that we're going to use the AND operation and take what was loaded and it was zero, which will effectively clear it out or set it to zero. So we don't want a negative number in here. So it will be set to zero. And if it is positive or zero, we will jump down here and we will double the value. So we, it must be positive if we get to this line of code. And so we're going to take what's in R1, add it to itself, store it back in R1. So we're going to override R1 with basically a the what's in R1 times 2 or add it to itself. So we're going to do one of two things. So either way, we will end up with some kind of change in R1. It'll either be 0 or double its value. Now, uh, currently, because it's negative, we can play computer here and predict what's going to happen. We're going to read it. 
condition code register is negative. We're going to jump here. We'll take this branch. We'll jump around here. We'll execute this line of code and zero it out. If this were positive, then we can also think about that. We would come up here and load this. Condition code register would be positive. We would check. We would execute this line, but not take the branch. Then we would fall through and just execute the next line, which also happens to be a branch. Here we would encounter a positive, so a zero or a positive would cause us to, to take this branch, jump down to this label, and we'd execute this line of code. Once we finish um, you know, this line of code or this line of code, we just continue executing in a normal step-by-step -step instruction unless we have some other branches. So uh, I guess we'll leave this positive for now, save it and assemble it. And then let's walk through it here. We're going to first load the data. Okay, so we have a four positive in the condition code register. So we're here testing for negative, but we're not going to take this. When I step over, we didn't take it. We just dropped to the next line. Condition code register remains positive. And this time we're going to take this branch. We're going to jump, jump around. Now we don't see the labels here, but uh, if I recall from the source code, yep. We're going to jump to this line and uh, execute it and then continue on. So uh, when I step over, here we are down here. We're going to take our four and double it. We now have eight and then we're at halt. Okay, so uh, pretty much uh, like I expected. Let's go ahead and make this a negative value. We'll save and assemble that. Pop over here. We will reinitialize the machine, and I uh, will do this again. So here we are ready for this run. This time we have a negative value that we're going to load. So we already pretty much know what's going to happen here. So we're going to load it. Condition code register is in. We're going to branch, and we're going to jump around to here. Okay, and then we're going to uh, we're going to zero this out. And there it is, zero. Okay, now we're at the point where there is a flaw in this code. And that is that after doing this uh, zero out step that we want to do for negative values, we just fell through to the next instruction. So we effectively took the branch correctly, did the right thing, and then we just fell through. And now we're going to do this instruction. Now. In the case of this particular code, nothing interesting is going to happen because we're going to take zero, add it to zero, and store it in R1. So it's still going to be zero. So it will work right, but it's still the code itself is not correct. The way to fix that, I think I'll go ahead and re reinitialize the machine here. The way to fix that is after we complete this is neg. Uh, set of instructions, and I can have multiple instructions in here. Say I want to do several things if the value was negative. I just list them here, and then they'll get executed in that order. The last instruction here, so that I don't do the code inside the is pause or zero, is to branch to the done label. So I do that one of two ways, br, and then I can do in zp done, and that is like an unconditional branch that is branch regardless of what is in the um, the condition code register a shortcut for that is to put nothing there and this is also an unconditional branch so now after we complete this or whatever other instructions we have here we're going to jump around this jump down here and continue on so this makes it a true if else construct So uh, step over, we're going to take the is neg. So now we're down here. We're going to do the things that we need to do if the value is negative. We zeroed it out. And now we're going to jump around and skip this because we don't want to do that if the value is negative. So we step over that, and now we're done to halt. So now we have a true if else. Uh, the key is to, to jump into a, the if part, and then you got to jump back out of it, jump around the else part.